Hi, um, today I'll be showing you a, a pendant um, starting from um, you know making it um, to the uh, part where I assemble the entire piece. I think this was an idea someone has suggested um, on my channel, and I I I think that's it's it's that's a great idea. Uh, except for the um, the the firing process, I think I've already mentioned um, earlier as well that I uh, generally get my pieces um, uh, bisque fired uh, at a studio close by. Uh, so that's something that I won't be able to show here. Um, so apart from that, I would show a really simple, easy pendant. Uh, and I'll also I'll also be showing you how I I generally would assemble a piece in a quick easy manner and uh, well yeah so here I have a simple well needed ball of clay so what I would do is um, using my rolling pin I'll just roll out um, a roughly a thickness of about zero point um, four centimeters of yeah approximately zero point four to zero point five centimeters. Once that's done, I would use a knife, uh, a basic knife would do. Um, it's at a 45 degree angle, I would just um, scrape off. I would not, I'm not really scraping, I'm just flattening the surface. So once that's done, like you see, I've not really scraped off anything. I've just, in a 45 degree angle, I've just smoothened uh, the surface. That's all is what I have done. Uh, once that's done, um, you can use, or rather, um, the cutter that you, you, the shape of the pendant that you want. So I'll be uh, using an oval shaped cutter today. This is just a simple stainless steel cookie cutter that I have. So, here you go. It up gently push it away once you have the piece cleanly cut in this manner just smoothen the sides first because there's always um, you know these, these sometimes these cutters may not really be very uh, precise in the end so um, you know you may just want to do this uh, to get it get it nice and neat once that's done Repeat the process of smoothening the uh, surface with um, with the knife. So once that's done, if you see, it's it's really it, it's creating a very nice working surface, and that that's always easier. It helps getting a nice smooth uh, smooth finish um, uh, once the piece is fired and then painted. Now, once the piece is ready, um, we start working on the design. What would usually do is, uh, if if you're not uh, comfortable, then you can probably just mark lightly a center and then draw it. But because I'm I'm okay with uh, drawing through the center, I probably do this. I'll draw something like this. Then I would draw a, a zigzag pattern. I'll move on to using. Um, this is the uh, the refill part of the pen. Um, rather, you can use the, uh, the the refill as well. That also would uh, that also helps the pen refill the back part of that to get the hole uh, which is similar to this design. So using that like that, really simple, nothing too complicated. Once that is done. You can have um, a gungru bead or a u-pin bead, uh, a stick bead or anything that you want. And um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, you can use a tool like this. Just put it in and fix the pin. That's just a nichrome wire. Uh, once that's done, just make sure you don't have any nail marks or anything of that sort on the surface and you have this pendant ready. It's a really simple, very easy uh, pendant. Now uh, this would roughly take about um, 
you can say about three days prop not even three days i would probably give it lesser time than that for it to at least dry out uh, before it goes into the uh, before it goes into the electric kiln and uh, uh, that uh, will be fired at about 800 900 degrees c for uh, roughly 8 8 hours gradually increasing the temperature and uh, then it will take a long time to cool as well and uh, once that's done uh, it will be removed and the pendant will look like this you can see that the color is much lighter you can see that there is a certain level of shrinkage that's happened in the piece there's significantly about 10% uh, shrinkage roughly uh, in the piece uh, overall uh, because it will shrink at two stages once when this piece dries and second when it goes into firing and then it starts looking like this it's it's much lighter and um, it's it's much like obviously it's much lighter in color it's got a beautiful um, biscuit uh, terracotta color uh, so that's this is how it is uh, at this stage obviously because it's 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 fired you can you can apply uh, glazes as well and convert this into ceramic jewelry uh, that's another thing uh, so i intend to put black uh, gold and uh, white uh, on this so that's the combination i intend to choose you want to apply a nice uh, nice coat so that it's uh, it's got a good even finish because th this would be this is not just the background color this is also going to be the final color of the piece so um, yeah i would just draw out uh, uh, these uh, rather highlight these designs with a little bit of gold and white and probably do a little freestyle painting on the end of the pendant that's all is what i will be doing on this piece uh, so you know make sure the coat is really nice once that's dried once that's completely dried i would use just a little bit of gold you see that that's it i would use white again i would repeat with the um the same brush It's a really simple classy color combination very very easy uh, you can leave it at this stage if that's uh, if that's all is what you want uh, but um, I would like to uh, probably do a little bit more towards the side just a little bit of freestyle uh, drawing I would combine both um, the gold as well as the white and just something like that. I'll use a little bit of gold just okay. use something like that. We'll keep this aside. Keep that aside now and um, We'll work on the beads. So I just have two plain beads here. Just plain round beads. Um, paint them black. There you go. You have these two pieces. I had already painted these two and kept. So I have about four black beads here. Use the black. Just make sure it's all you get it nice and um, in the in in all of the carvings that's been done. Make sure the coating. Uh, I'd repeat that if I say it again, but yeah, make sure the coating is is nice and um, neat. Because um, you, you, uh, you that's the base co base color of the uh, of the bead itself. So, see, for example, if you want this to be red, then make sure your coating of red is given nice and neatly. Used. Okay. 
there you go you have that now make sure you don't have too much of excess water uh, in, in these pieces because in, sorry in your brush because you don't want uh, water from the brush dripping into the paint and then diluting it even further that's again a you know then it just it'll just ruin the whole thing for you so I'll go through the center line do it this way You can also hold on to some hold on to this bead using a support if you have an old thin brush or something like a needle of this sort you can just you know put it like this stick it and then hold it as support and then go through that it's, it's going to be much easier handling smaller uh, beads and also done yeah, I've just cut a really long one I think you can just uh, you can just adjust it um, to whatever length you want and um, you know go ahead and cut it at the end like this and uh, what I would do now is I, I have not put in fevicol but you can put some fevicol give it a couple of minutes let it let it harden a little bit so you have almost a needle like uh, shape that's formed uh, over here at the tip and uh, so what I would do is I would generally hold this to the tip of uh, my index and my thumb my index finger and my thumb and I would make sure the entire thing kind of goes into the hole and then I would twist and push and there you go that's it I would want this bead to go in next once you know that it's centrally placed uh, I prefer knotting it at the end just so that the beads are not constantly moving up and down so I would just generally give a simple knot like this everything is corded in this one loop so you know that it, the piece is going to be extremely strong there's no way it's going to cut unless you take a scissors and just cut it off so uh, so so what happens is you have these two cords here you want to hold it really close now this bead uh, unfortunately I won't be able to tell you a size the reason being um, it's completely dependent on the thickness of the cord that you choose now for me um, this this size helps the other thing that is very important in choosing a bead I this is a wooden bead by the way uh, now I know this bead will suit my purpose because the hole is just appropriate and I have been using the same thing for years together and uh, it sits make sure that it has to sit firmly because somebody may want to wear this very close to the neck somebody may want to wear it lower or longer so you know it has to the bead has to sit firmly not that it has to just go really you know smooth up and down uh, it shouldn't be loose that's what I intend to and the same method what I use for this is uh, the way I assemble the beads I would do the same thing for this as well now I this is a bit of a cha again this is probably going to be a little bit more difficult than assembling the bead but I would generally try pushing the whole thing both the cords end you can see how frayed the end is um, you know that's where the challenging part comes and at that stage what I end up doing is I just use a plier I hold on to the cord I make sure there is a bit that is already gone in I make sure there is a portion that's already gone in I hold the cord in, in this manner with my left hand and then I just you know try and push it in now this is something like I said comes with practice it's it's not the most um, straightforward method but uh, you know it, it's it just helps uh, you know once you get it it'll be fine 
like you see i'm able to actually rotate this and you can see a, a portion that's coming out once it has to be this tight the reason is if it is too loose and if it gets in too easily you know that the cord is going to just it's not going to hold the length of the chain you know this just helps gripping it that's all is what i'm doing i'm not doing anything i'm just holding it really tight once i know a sufficient amount is out here i would just pull both the cords now i know this is firm it's not it's not like really loose i know it will hold on to the um if a person wants to wear the chain if a person wants to wear the chain like really um you know close to the neck or wherever that he wants to wear it she wants to wear it it's it's going to be really firm in this manner so now what i do is how i seal the end is i just do a double knot in this manner it's just a double knot that's all it's just both the cords and i've done it and what you can do now is you can open this that's the advantage of using this nylon cord um you know you call it a you, you just make you're just trying to make a tassel you're trying to uh, imitate a tassel you, you can make it uh, you know separately also if you would like to uh, but like i said this is a simple hassle free way of um uh, doing um, the assembling part the whole thing comes in one go and there you go you have this this whole piece that's done you so um i i i really hope uh, you you found this uh, video useful like i said two places where you will definitely find it a little challenging is uh, one while assembling the beads because this thing can really have a tendency to get frayed in this manner and obviously at the uh, when you're trying to put in two cords into one wooden bead you know that's again a bit of a um, it's it's not easy i i would not say it's easy but uh, again when you practice and when you keep doing it it will come to you easily um like this is the most preferred way i'm not a fan of using gear wire but i do tend to use it because some pieces demand that kind of assembling especially when the beads have smaller holes uh but these have bigger holes and i think using this is the most safest option in my opinion uh so yeah i think if you uh, if you guys um like what you're seeing then uh, please like the video and uh, subscribe to our youtube channel um thank you so much for watching guys pretty huh